Carry on, Clarabel. Annie and Clarabel work with Thomas on his branch line. They enjoy running backwards and forwards along the line. They know everyone and everyone knows them. Thank you all for such a smooth journey, the passengers would say. You truly are the pride of the line. They are happy to provide a really useful service. Once upon a time, Annie and Clarabel had worked on the main line. They would bustle along behind the bigger engines. But as the railway grew, they found the slower pace of the branch line suited them much better. But one day, Clarabel was missing the old days. It's nostalgia, Clarabel said. I remember the days when we'd go much further than the branch line allows. I don't think I'd want to do that again, Annie said. I've grown used to our little branch line. I'm sure you'd change your mind if we did go out on the main line, Clarabel said cheekily. So long as it isn't James taking us, it would be fun. Our passengers need us here. We can't just gallivant onto the main line, Annie said. So do let's put away this silly idea. It's not silly, Clarabel protested. I just think it would be nice to see the world a bit more. The two coaches started to argue their points with each other. But as they headed over the junction, there was a bump, a jerk, and a loud crack. Clarabel slid to a stop a short distance behind Thomas and Annie. Is everything all right back there? Thomas said. The guard climbed out and inspected the problem. Your coupling has broken, Clarabel. You'll have to go to the repair side in tonight. That's a fine mess you've gotten yourself into, Annie said flatly. Thomas carefully pushed Clarabel to the repair siding so she could be mended overnight. I'll see you both tomorrow, he said. Hopefully you'll feel better from this nostril loudy thing that you have, Clarabel. Clarabel was now alone in the yards. She sighed and drifted off to sleep, thinking about the old days. Clarabel woke up to find herself moving down the line. Her eyes popped open, and was relieved to find herself coupled to another coach behind her. Thank goodness, she said. I'm glad my coupling's been fixed. Wouldn't have been much help on the branch line otherwise, wouldn't you agree, Annie? There was no reply. Clarabel was surprised when she realised she was at the end of a long line of coaches, travelling on the main line. I must have been coupled up by mistake, she exclaimed. I'll have to tell someone at the next station. She looked out at the countryside as it sped past her, and was amazed by how different everything was from the branch line. I'm sure Thomas and Annie will manage without me for a while, she thought to herself as she basked in the warm morning sun. Thomas came into the yard and was quite surprised to find Annie but no Clarabel. She couldn't have just rolled off on her own, Thomas exclaimed, unless they fitted her with a boiler overnight. That's a silly idea, Thomas, Annie said. There was a pause. Oh, Clarabel always chimes in with, very silly indeed. This will not do. We must find her, Thomas said. I can't have a missing coach. There's no time, Thomas's driver said. We're late as it is. We'll have to make other arrangements. Oh dear, oh dear, Thomas said. Wherever could Clarabel be? Clarabel was enjoying her journey. Her luggage compartment was full, and she found the new sights and sounds exciting. But life on the main line had changed since she'd last been there. When they arrived at the next station, some passengers got off. They banged her doors, their luggage was roughly unloaded, and then they left, without even so much as a thank you. How rude, Clarabel said, startled. But she didn't have time to protest, as they were soon away again. She tried to sing a song, but there was no one else to join along. She tried to strike up a conversation, but the other coaches weren't as talkative. Soon her axles started to ache, and she started to miss her friends. Thomas and Annie were missing Clarabel too. Without her, Thomas lumbered up the branch line with an express coach and a van for luggage. The passengers and station staff joked about the rather strange looking train and people along the line took pictures as they passed. I feel rather silly, Thomas said. This express coach is much too big for my branch line, and this van is rattling much too much. I hope Clarabel's all right, Annie said sadly. I wish we hadn't argued. Rosie was surprised to find Clarabel sitting alone in her shunting yard. Hello, she chirruped. You're yeah, Clarabel, aren't you? It's a surprise to see you this far from home. Clarabel looked down at her buffers as she explained her day. I asked to be uncoupled when we arrived at the station, she said. 
I wish I could get back to Annie and Thomas. Rosie thought for a moment. I have an idea, she said. It's bending the rules a bit, and you'll have to travel with trucks, but it should help you out. Clarabelle was confused, but agreed to be coupled up. Thomas arrived at the big station with his strange train. Annie was very downhearted. Clarabel could be anywhere in the world by now. She might not be, Thomas said hopefully. The last time we were taken out by someone else, we almost ended up travelling onto the mainland, Annie said. She could be at the end of the line, alone, without anyone to talk to. Or she could be here, at the end of this goods train, said a familiar voice. Thomas and Annie were surprised to see a now rather dusty Clarabelle draw up alongside at the end of a long goods train. Clarabelle! Annie said. Wherever have you been? Once she had been uncoupled from the goods train, Clarabelle was soon retelling the day's events. She smiled apologetically. It was a nice change, she said, but everything's so big on the main line now. It's easy for one little coach to get lost out there. Thomas thought, and then he grinned. I have an idea that might suit all of us. Annie and Clarabel were back together working on the branch line the next morning. The passengers were very glad for Clarabel's safe return. Now, however, whenever either coach longs for the old days, Thomas asks the fat controller if he can take the local, a slow passenger train on the main line that stops at every station. The three of them enjoy the occasional change of pace. They know everyone, and everyone knows them and they are happy to see the world together, as best friends should.